Thank you so much for the opportunity. And I, I really love those breathing exercises. I think I'm going to do that every time before I present. But great. Uh, can you confirm that you're seeing my screen? So I can get started. All looks good yeah. from here. Great. All right. So I'm Fernando. For those of you, I, I see a very many familiar faces. I'm very happy to see you all. And I'm the product manager at Yammer who is working on the home feed. Now, I know there are a lot of power users here, but for just to make sure everyone's on the same page, the home feed is the machine learning powered feed that we have in Yammer's home page. And as Steve mentioned in the chat, we recently released a blog post that explains in detail how our feed works. Uh, but for those of you who haven't seen it, don't worry, we're gonna cover a lot of the details that we talked about there. For those of you who did read it, uh, thank you, first of all, but also uh, we will cover more in detail. Uh, and we'll also talk about what, what has changed since then and what's coming in the pipeline. So I think all of you will find uh, the next 15 minutes valuable, hopefully. So I want to start by connecting the home feeds value proposition to Yammer's overall value proposition, right? And a lot of what we hear from our customers is that the home feed is the only place that gives me visibility beyond my immediate team. You're breaking the silos and you find things you didn't expect, right? Those things you didn't know that existed, but that you appreciate. Those things that kind of surprisingly uh, put a smile on your face because you weren't expecting it, but all of a sudden you find this content, you engage with it. So in the home feed, right, what one of uh, what we do, what we try to do at Yammer and with the home feed is to try to empower every employee to want to connect, right, to share their opinions on the company strategy or share their hobbies or their passions and across all the departments and across all levels in the organization. With the home feed, we want to give leaders a very valuable window of opportunity for them to kind of discover this content, learn about what employees are saying, thinking, feeling. So if in the past, you can imagine uh, in, in very, like many years ago, uh, leaders would randomly walk the factory floors, right? To get a sense of how their employees are feeling. Well, you can imagine the home feed being the new digital version of walking the factory floor to kind of get a sense of what's happening uh, with the people, with the boots on the ground. As leaders uh, that have the opportunity to engage and kind of shift the perception if necessary or shape the culture, other employees can discover this content and also engage. And as you bring more people from all departments, what you end up having is, is what you end up having is a, a more inclusive and more rounded point of view. So that's what we try to do uh, with the home feed. Now, in the companies where we've seen Yammer be deployed successfully, um, we see a very engaged workforce, right? We see employees deeply invested in their jobs, in their companies, in their relationships at work. And so they feel empowered to share and also to chime in and connect with others. Now, when that happens, of course, that has so many benefits, but it also leads to a second problem, which in my opinion, it's a good problem to have, right? Which is now people are engaging, people are sharing. And so we have way more content available to all of us than we can ever consume. And that's where, why the Yammer home feed uh, is so critical and fundamental to delivering the value proposition of Yammer, right? we try to show you what's most relevant to you at the very top of the feed. And the way we do that is we gather uh, up to 1,000 posts that are available to you in the communities you're a member of and the ones you're not a member of, of the people you follow and of the people you don't follow. And we assign a relevance score to that 1,000 posts. And then we sort the feed based on this relevance score. Now you can imagine that we all have different degrees of interest for the different topics. 
So the home feed is actually personalized to each employee, and we all get to see a different feed. So how do we come up with the with that relevance score, right? And again, this is an equation that is always changing. We're always iterating, always improving. But I'll tell you some of the high level signals that we look at. One of the things we look at is at the community, right? Where the message was posted. So we, we ask like, are you a member of this community? Have you visited the community recently? Did you mark this community? And this is something we don't talk about in the blog post, but um, if you, have this community marked as one of your top 10 favorite communities, that is one of the signals we look at in order to prioritize your content. And whether you have liked or replied to other posts from the community. We also look at the author, and not just of the initial message, but also of the replies. And we ask whether you follow this person, have you visited their profile recently, have you liked or replied to some other posts of this same author? All of these things start adding up uh, to that relevance score. Now, the two that I just mentioned are probably one, some of the uh, most important signals. And that's why we encourage uh, all of the Yammer users to not join and follow people for the sake of, of following, but to take the time to explore and find communities that you might be interested in, find people that are posting interesting things and follow them. The more you follow, the more communities you join, the more signals you are giving Yammer and allowing us to improve the recommendations for you. We look at things like uh, the type of message, whether it's a poll, a praise, a question, or a regular post. We look at how many people have liked it, how many people have replied to it. Overall, we look at 100 and plus signals, and we're constantly adding more and more signals uh, to kind of better understand what you care about. So let's look at an average uh, feed and how it's how it's composed. So for a for an average user, the 70 to 80 percent of the feed is subscription content. By subscription, we mean post in communities that you've joined or people you follow or topics you follow. That's what we but that's what we refer to subscription content. And we we have seen in aggregate that this is the most engaging content of all. One thing to keep in mind is that we never show content that is older than 30 days. We filter it out. And something that's also not in the blog post, uh, but it's something that we recently shipped uh, is this new, this new uh, change that we call it internally impression discounting. So before what we did is we will show you all the unseen messages before we started to reshow uh, messages that you already saw. But what we've learned is that there might be posts that you already saw, but after you saw them, they had significant activity happen around them. And so what we're looking is to resurface those posts uh, of course, we penalize them because you already saw them, so they have to have significant uh, activity and, and be relevant enough for us to bump that above a message that you haven't seen. But again, we want to surface the most relevant information at any given point. Um, so this is a new change, and we've seen the numbers from across the board, and, and this, is, this has been uh, very successful for people to come back to the feed, engage with more posts. So that's the first type of post you can expect in the feed. Then you have uh, featured conversations, right? And this is a mechanism that we offer uh, corporate communicators for them to reach their audience. We always show these posts at the top of the feed, and we show one at a time. So if there is more than one available, people will see it when they come back to the feed or when they refresh the feed. Now. We've heard from customers that sometimes you mute a community and you still see a post in the feed and, and you're like, why is this happening? So the only way that can happen is if uh, you muted a community, but the network admin featured that conversation. Feature posts will override the muting settings. And then finally, 
uh, feature conversations can also show up organically in the feed, right? If the post is engaging enough and we think that that's the most relevant thing you could be reading, then we will show it regardless of the fact that it is a, a feature conversation. But if it's not that engaging, we will still guarantee that slot in the near the top of the feed. Then we have recommended content, right? And we, a new change that's coming uh, that we're working on right now is today all recommended content is shown with a label on the top a description that says recommended. It's very generic and it's hard to understand why it's being recommended. But we're breaking that uh, apart and we are telling you, we are showing you this recommended post because we believe you might be interested in the in the in the person who posted it or in the community. You're not a member, but we believe this community might be of interest based on the signals we have. Uh, and we're doing the same for topics and then trending, which I will talk at the end of the slide. But you can you can soon start to see this breakdown of why we're recommending content. Recommended content uh, it covers like 10 to 20 percent of the feed, but it is incredibly incredibly valuable to deliver on the value proposition of Yammer because, like I mentioned, Yammer is the only place where you can get to work with to 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 uh, discover things that are beyond that go beyond your immediate team and recommended content is a, a fantastic way for us to break the silos and show you what you were not expecting to see but things that hopefully are interesting to you right and that's why we are always constantly seeking more and more signals to make these recommendations better this is the second most engaging type uh, of content uh, after subscription content, but we, in many cases we can see that recommended content can have a higher relevance score than a, than a post of a community that you're a member of or any subscription content, right? So that's why it's intermingled with subscription content. So just, just to share some um, uh, learnings that we have along the way, we, we have tried in the past to show subscription content before showing recommended content. Uh, and what we've seen is that people engage less, right? People, uh, there might be subscription content that is not that relevant. And so you miss on the opportunity, you stop scrolling and you miss on those opportunities to discover some uh, new content. So even though we do prioritize subscription content, we always, uh, we always try to help you find that interesting content. And for maybe new employees or people who haven't subscribed to that many uh, uh, communities or, or people to follow, they, they might see more recommended content that the feed might be predominantly. So again, we encourage all people to take the time to explore, find communities, find interesting people and follow them because that will improve the recommendations. And we're also investing a lot in helping people uh, find and in all these discovery mechanisms to join and follow interesting people. Then we have SharePoint news, right? Which is about one, uh, one out of every hundred posts, you can expect it to be a SharePoint news article and you can expect it to be after the fourth post. And finally, we have trending content, which is not personalized content. It's the same for everyone in, in the company, and it's usually the most liked uh, or the post with most replies. This usually, uh, you know, people engage um, less with these types of posts, which is why they always at the bottom of the feed. Once you exhausted all of your subscription and recommended content. So that is it for today. I think it's almost 15 minutes. Uh, I really love these opportunities to share all these things with you, but I also love to learn from you. So uh, feel free to connect um, and yeah, I would love to stay in touch.